Hi everyone, it's Rebecca from The Healthy Gut and today I wanted to talk to you about how you can fly internationally with SIBO. I'm here in Los Angeles, I've just flown here from Australia and I wanted to share with you my hints and tips for making your international travel successful. Before you fly, the best thing is to speak to your airline and ask them about the meals that they can serve you. Now, I often go for a gluten-free meal because then at least I know that gluten is out of the meal. There isn't yet a meal on a plane that is completely SIBO-friendly, so you will still need to pick around the food that they do serve you. But I do find that the gluten-free meals are normally pretty light and uh, don't contain too many allergens. Do speak to your airline before you fly. Tell them about your dietary requirements and they will be able to help you find a SIBO-friendly-ish meal that should suit you on the plane. Now, if there is nothing that you can tolerate on the plane, then take your own food. I always pack my own snacks. So I take things like seeds and nuts. They're always really great and non-perishable. I'll also make up a little container of salad. I might put some tuna fish in there uh, or some um, nitrate-free cured meats. And depending on how much you want to offend your fellow passengers, I have been known to take peeled, hard-boiled eggs. They're a great source of protein. Before you fly, make sure you fill up all of your prescriptions and your SIBO medications. What you don't want to do is run out of your medication while you are in your new country on your trip. And if you are changing time zones dramatically, start staying up later or going to bed earlier, depending on which way around the world you are traveling. This can really help you to get into your new time zone. And make sure you stay really hydrated. Plane travel is incredibly dehydrating, so you want to be as hydrated as possible before you get on the plane. The few days leading up to my long haul travel, I always spend them drinking plenty of water, so I'm nice and hydrated by the time I jump on that aeroplane. Once you're in the air, here are my handy tips on what you can do to survive the flight. Now, just because they serve you a meal on an aeroplane doesn't mean you need to eat it. You may be like me and you might decide to fast for part or all of the duration of the flight. Sitting in those cramped tiny seats can play havoc on our digestive system. So by not putting a lot of food into it, we can actually be providing it with a little bit of extra support to survive the plane travel. If you do decide to eat, eat lightly and try to leave big long gaps between each meal so that you can give your digestive system the chance it needs to process the food. If you're someone like me and you bloat on an aeroplane regardless of what you do or don't eat, I find that activated charcoal can be really useful for helping to control some of the bloating. I also find that I need to get up and move around the aircraft. Uh, if I stay seated on the airplane in my seat, the bloating can get a lot worse. And guys, if you're like me and the bloating comes regardless of what you do, use the chance to get up and go to the restroom uh, to move your body, but also to help get some of that uh, unwanted air out. I always wear really loose fitting clothes, particularly around my waist because my abdominal area bloats so much when I'm on an aeroplane. So I actually wear um, my yoga pants. They're really soft and comfortable and they've got a really soft elasticated waist and they allow for movement in my abdominal area. But I don't want everybody seeing that I'm bloated, so I layer my clothing and I've got a nice long scarf that I drape around me, which also helps to hide the bloat at the end of the flight. This also serves as a way to protect my nose from those unwanted smells. 
I always seem to get stuck to the stinky farty people and I spray a little bit of perfume or uh, essential oils on my scarf and then I use that to wrap my face if those unwanted smells come passing by. When you get on the flight guys make sure that you wipe down the area that you're seated in. Studies have shown that aeroplanes are incredibly germ ridden places so when our digestive system is compromised we can be more susceptible to getting infections. So with an antibacterial wipe Wipe down your seat, the armrests, the belt buckle and the tray table and any other things that you might touch such as the TV control pad. People put all sorts of things on these uh, places and you don't want to be exposed to them. And guys, when you get up and go to the restroom, make sure you're wearing shoes. I cannot believe how many times I see people walking in there with bare feet. We do not need to expose ourselves to any extra germs or bacteria than we already are exposed to. So put a pair of shoes on or if you're like me and you don't want to have to go through the hassle of putting all your shoes back on, I take a pair of flip-flops with me so I can just slide them on. I also like to travel with some home comforts. So I take a neck pillow. As I said, I have my scarf which is centered so I can protect myself from those smells. I also take noise cancelling ear headphones with me so that I can block out those unwanted sounds or if there's a child nearby who is not overly happy at flying. And I take an eye mask with me so I can try to get some sleep. Talking about sleep on a plane, I always try to sleep at the evening time of the destination that I'm going to. And to help me do this, I take Neurocalm, which is from Metagenics, and it really helps to put me to sleep. So here is my trusted Neurocalm here. You can see it there. And it helps just to take the edge off when I am flying and put me to sleep. I also use it when I get to my destination to help get me into the sleeping habits of my new time zone. Now there's nothing worse than being stuck on a plane and there are people coughing and spluttering all around you. So I like to um, help protect my system however I can. And I now use the Biocidin throat spray. You can see it there. And I find that this works really well guys when there's someone um, nearby who's coughing and spluttering. I just do a few sprays to the back of my throat uh, every hour or so depending on um, who I'm exposed to and I find that this really helps me to not get so sick when I get to the other end or it completely stops it in its tracks. I do take my SIBO medication when I'm on the plane. Um, when we are scrunched down in a seated position for a really long period of time like you are on international travel then our uh, migrating motor complex can be compromised or it can find it very difficult to work. So my go-to trusty whoops, support is my Motul Pro and that for me works wonders. It really helps keep my digestive system moving. It's also really important to stay hydrated on that flight. So I drink a good couple of litres of water. I take um, I buy bottles of water, the bigger the better, once I've passed through security and I take them on the plane with me and I have a little challenge with myself which is that I have to drink all of those bottles of water before I get off the plane. Now I always request an aisle seat so that means I can be up and down to the restroom as often as I need to. Particularly when you're drinking that much water, you do need to go to the toilet more often. So guys, do pick an aisle seat if you're like me and you're wanting to stay hydrated. I also find planes to be incredibly dehydrating on my skin. So I use a couple of different moisturizers. I've got this gorgeous Neil's Yard hand moisturizer, which I use on my hands. And then I also love the Ecology Skincare range um, by my friend Crystal at Ecology Skincare. Uh, she's got these really great size travel packs 
which are perfect to pop in your handbag. This is a tallow based moisturizer, so it's all natural and I rub it all over my face. You can put it on your lips as a lip balm. You can even use it as a hand cream. It's really wonderful. So when you arrive to your new destination and it can be super exciting to be in a new place, particularly if you've never traveled there before. So here are my top tips on surviving when, as soon as you arrive in your new location. The first thing to do guys is get some direct sunlight on your skin. This will help to reset your circadian rhythms. So throw on that active wear, put your walking shoes on and get outside as soon as you can. My normal routine is to dump my bags in my accommodation and then get straight out the door and go for a walk, regardless of how tired I'm feeling. And this really helps to um, reset my internal body clock to my new time zone. You will still be extremely dehydrated from the flight, so keep up the water intake. I keep drinking loads and loads of water when I'm first acclimatizing to my new location. I also eat really gently and lightly. So I don't go for heavy fried foods, I go for light foods. I really aim to support my digestive system as much as possible. So my first meal when I arrived in Los Angeles was some steamed wild caught salmon and some steamed green veggies. It was a really light and nutritious meal. It's also really important to get some exercise and some movement in. I love the YouTube channel Yoga with Adrienne. She has got a heap of free yoga videos that you can do on her YouTube channel. She's even got one called Yoga When Traveling. So that is super handy and it helps to stretch out the body after you've been scrunched up on a plane for many hours. If you're feeling exhausted like I was yesterday when I arrived in Los Angeles because I hadn't slept on the flight at all, despite my best intentions to, then if you need to, do take a short nap. Try to time it in the 90 minute cycles that you sleep in. So maybe do a 90 minute sleep or go for two rounds of 90 minutes, um, but don't sleep more than that. That's 180 minutes. Um, don't sleep more than that though guys because you don't want to uh, get out of your new time zone. Stay up as late as you can so you can get yourself into your new bedtime regime and use a supportive aid like NeuroCalm to help get you to sleep and that's what I take at night time to help dr drift me off to sleep. If you do wake up in the middle of the night guys, don't stress about it. I will then turn on my phone and put on one of my sleep meditation apps or guides and that will often help me get straight back to sleep. But if you still can't get back to sleep after an hour or so, get up, um, try and move your body a little bit, uh, go and do something completely different and then go back to bed and try sleeping again and I find that normally works for me. A note to remember when it comes to changing time zones is that for every hour that you change your time zone, it can take a day to recover. So if you're like me and you've just changed 17 hours in time zones, then theoretically it can take 17 days to recover. So do be gentle with yourself guys and don't expect to be um, in your new time zone after just one sleep. Be kind, be gentle, eat a nice nourishing food and get the sleep when you need it. And as always, make sure you have your SIBO medication on hand. Just because you're traveling doesn't mean that we should stop our gut healing protocol. But have fun guys, travel is amazing. I love going and exploring new places. So I hope my healthy handy tips on traveling internationally are really useful for you. If you've got any other tips that you use to travel successfully, I'd love to hear them. Pop them in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to my channel to get loads more updates and handy hints and tips on how you can live well with SIBO. I'm Rebecca Coombs from The Healthy Gut and I look forward to seeing you soon.